So Amanda from In The Morning came up to me and asked, hey, would it be possible for us to do a Pop Goes Punk version of Get Out by JoJo? And I said, yeah, I think we can do that. So after collaborating back and forth for a bit, this is what we came up with. And I want to show you guys how I did it. But before we jump into that, why don't you hit subscribe? Anyway, so this track was actually really fun for me to work on because I grew up listening to Pop Goes Punk, which was a series that Fearless Records used to put out every year. And it was literally this. It was just a pop song that was completely separate from the genres that they did. And they would just get a bunch of bands to recreate pop songs in this pop punk style. And uh, it's really fun. But I genuinely think that even if you don't care about pop punk at all, this is a really good example examination of songwriting because when you start doing stuff like this you start to realize that pretty much any song can be turned into any other genre of song if you just understand the basics of that genre how different instruments interact with each other how different elements of the mix interact with each other what kind of textures you're going to be using constantly and so when you have a really good grasp on those elements it's actually pretty straightforward to take a song from one genre and just translate it into another so to examine that let's start out by looking at the main guitar parts here. This is actually pretty darn close to the original song, which has kind of this like TLC in the year 2000 vibe. So pretty much all I did was take the original riff and then just run it through a completely different amp sound than what they had on the original track. The original was more of like this really clean, jazzy R&B thing. But since I'm running it through the clean channel of like a Gojira plugin, it has a little bit more of that brighter texture. Also, in case you can notice, I was not the best at tracking this part. So I actually split up the riff into two sections. So we have this top one here and then this low one here. Just because I felt like there was a very specific vibe of like that riff being played very cleanly and I wasn't able to get it all in like one take. So I just split it up into two takes, tracked them separately, put them in a bus and then ran these two DIs into this group, which has the guitar amp and all the other processing on it. It's a way to cheat. Double tracked it. Something else that I thought made this pop punk vibe hit a little bit more true to form is this a small room reverb. Especially with this style of like live band instrumentation, it's really important that everything feel like it's a band, like in a studio or in a live setting. My normal barometer for does it sound right is, uh, you know, when you go to a live show and you like go to the bathroom or you walk down the hallway from where the concert is happening, listen to that kind of reverb and then take some of the low end out of it. That's normally like a good barometer for the vibe that you're looking for. And after that riff that is in the original song we have this stuff which I call the in the morning vibe which is the super grungy heavy stuff <laughs> And it sounds kind of chaotic, but it's actually pretty straightforward. We have our main chords here, which is just straight power chords. Same Gojira amp plugin, but a slightly different patch, specifically turning on the chorus to get that sort of weird feeling. Amanda from In The Morning really likes that sort of grungy vibe. And I found like a chorus is like a good middle ground between like super, super flangery tone and the sort of like minimalist chorusing stuff happening. And then we have our lead tone on top of that. which is like the most like pop punk lead you can play. It's a really high voicing that you play on the neck on a dirty patch, but it's kind of on a clean amp and then using a bit of distortion to make it pop out on top. So like right here, the chord progression that we're using is the same one from the song, but we've translated it into the language of pop punk. Like I've tried to divide this almost as if a band had like two guitar players. You would have a guy playing the main riff while the singer is doing their thing during the verse. And then when it kicks to the chorus, you have the singer go to their super basic rhythm patch and then the lead guitar player has something that's a little bit different like arranging it the way that a band would play it and a for pop punk I just feel like that's a really good starting point for an arrangement but also in terms of genre bendy stuff if you can take the chords of the song and get those right in terms of arranging them across multiple different instruments that are appropriate for the genre I feel like that is crucial to getting pretty much any song to fit in any genre like if I 
was doing like a future bass track, it wouldn't just be like, oh, I'm going to change these guitar tones to be a little bit drier. It's like, no, I would probably not even use guitars on that. I would look at the genre specifically that I'm trying to emulate and bring out those elements that I know are going to work well in that setting. We then have our bass. All right, again, looking at what is appropriate for the genre. When I think of pop punk, I think very Vans Warp Tour, like distorted sans amp tone on an active bass that's really locked in with the kick drum so that there's this like percussive low end that sort of hits and is very syncopated with the song. <laughs> I think in the original version of this song from JoJo, it's uh, just like a synth bass, like something that is so like minuscule that it's like barely there at all. In terms of the actual tone i'm using this patch in parallax from neural dsp this is the mixing session so there's a bit more processing on it than i would normally use but yeah you can see even with something like the bass i'm sending a little bit of it to the room reverb you have to be careful not to run too much of it to that because it can like make the low end a bit muddy but i find that if you balance this out with making sure you don't have too much low end on your reverb it can be pretty cool next thing we have are the drums which actually i thought we had some pretty cool stuff happening in the verses. Like, if you listen to the original song, there's this almost like TLC style drum beat. It's very 90s R&B. And I feel like the drums were one of the parts where we deviated from the most. We wanted something that kind of had a similar sort of like chill, laid back vibe. But if you listen to the original song, it kind of keeps those drums going the entire way through. And we actually kind of change up the arrangement a bit. So like when it goes to like the pre-chorus here... Like it moves to the right a bit to just give it a little bit of energy and breathing space here as opposed to what it was doing in the previous sections because it's been playing that whole syncopated hi-hat beat the whole time. And then in the chorus, it just like completely goes nuts. So it went halftime there, which I felt personally as a former emo kid was super important because the original vibe of the song is this like, get up right now. And you need to take that chorus and make it something people can mosh to. So this is a good example of where you kind of have to choose your battles in terms of what you're going to keep from the original arrangement versus what you are going to make completely different and completely your own. Which for me personally, I think is the most important thing with a cover. I could care less about like what song you cover or what artist you do, or even if the artist that you're covering is relevant to the genre that you're doing. But what I do care about is does your cover actually sound like you? Like, has your cover actually done a job of expressing who you are as an artist to the listener, or does it just sound like a karaoke version of the original song? Kind of a personal pet peeve of mine. Underneath that, we have vocals, which there were a ton for this track. So here's the chorus. Hey, 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 get up right now. It's the end of you and me. It's too late now. And I can't wait for you to be gone, because I know. Again, even in the way that we're like mixing these vocals, we're not just being like, okay, what did Jojo do on her original song? This is one of the few songs that like me and Amanda were able to track in person together. And it was cool to collaborate on that because we knew that we wanted this energy in the chorus to be really like in your face. That's kind of not there in the original. Like it's there a bit. It's like a seven out of 10 in terms of delivery energy, but I feel like we wanted to make it more of a nine. And a lot of that comes from um, something I think a lot of people don't talk about is just like the way you deliver a take when you're tracking vocals is so important. Get out right now. It's the end of you and me. Like part of the reason why she sounds so powerful in that performance is because she's shouting in the room that we're tracking it. Like, I think a lot of people can get confused with all these plugins here at the bottom and think that the reason why the takes sound so good is because we're doing all this mixing after the fact. But me and every vocal mixing engineer I know all say the same thing, which is you cannot make a meek vocal big and bombastic 
take with effects or mixing. Like the take needs to be there. Otherwise you're kind of wasting your time. And like, honestly, it doesn't even really look like we're doing that much to this vocal. We're doing some multiband compression, some DSing, a bit more compression and color stuff. But then essentially another multiband compressor to level it out a bit from all of the gain reduction of those compressors and then a little bit of soothe. And that's essentially it. Like a majority of like the meat of the vocal is coming from the actual performance itself. And the uh, the mic that you track on is super important. We actually use this exact SM7B to track these again, because this is like the rock microphone. I know a lot of people are talking about the SM7B like, oh, it's an overrated mic. It, don't buy it. But like something that a lot of people don't understand is that on some level, stylistically, sometimes people just prefer this mic for the genre of music they're making. Like good luck walking into any kind of like rock or punk or metal studio without seeing at least two of these because they're just kind of like a part of the sound of that genre. But then another thing that really elevated this were the backgrounds that we tracked. Get up, leave right now. It's the end of you and me. Which is actually pretty simple. We just have some doubles. Get up, right now. And then we have some harmonies. Get Another stylistic thing that we wanted to do was the fact that in this genre, normally the harmonies are a bit shoutier. So when you're looking to do something in this style, sometimes it can be helpful to like take the key of the song that you're doing and almost like pitch it down a little bit, just so you make sure that your singer has like the upper range to hit stuff like this. Cause it sounds really cool when they can pull it off. And then sort of going back to the original song, there were these fun like gang vocals that are just kind of like iconic to the part of the song. Lee! Like not even really singing parts. It's literally just like her firmly saying leave now. And all of it together just kind of makes something that feels like a pop punk version of the original track that's like a little bit more elevated. Another thing that I knew that I wanted us to do since we were in the pop punk world were some Oz. <laughs> which Amanda was kind of unsure of when we were in the session because she didn't really know what I was asking her to do. But I was like, trust me, I've listened to enough a day to remember to know that this is going to sound cool. And we just do it for the bridge, but it just adds that like attitude. I wanted you right here with me. I have no choice. You gotta leave. Cause my heart is breaking with every word I'm saying. Like, it's just like a fun, like little chordal thing that even pop people like Charlie Puth do. And uh, it can really make a vocal range like dense without having to add too much. And yet, honestly, there's not a whole lot to go through with this song other than what I just showed you. Like, I feel like if you're going to do something like this, where you're making a cover of a song in a style that is different from the original, like 90% of it is just learning how to get all of those elements to gel together. It's just knowing the genre that you are trying to transfer it to knowing what chordal and percussive elements play well in that space, but just kind of picking and choosing and being like, okay, what from the original works in this new setting and what stuff that we might have to change. And when you layer it all together, you get something like this. Yeah. But yeah, that's the full track. If you guys want to go listen to it, it is live on streaming platforms everywhere. I'll link to it in the description of this video and go check out Amanda from In The Morning. She does a bunch of cool stuff and it's really fun whenever I get to work on projects with her. But yeah, I will see you guys next week.